Hello there, and uh, welcome to another exciting episode of Fargo Retro. Today I am very excited to bring you Out of Steam, the game I made uh, with four other individuals at the Fargo Game Jam. Um, big Fargo Game Jam 2019, hashtag Fargo Game Jam 2019. Um, this is the intro music, I'm going to get into it, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about it here. So we got a play button, we got an exit button. Let's go ahead and hit that play button here. Growing up in a crowded borough oh, who's that? Inside, West Chousterberry. Sultry voiced, uh, voiceover actor. Early in her reign, the Golden Queen found a lost book from the sage Nikolai Tesla, detailing machines of great power. Mechanical marvels solved the scarcity at home and powered weapons of war to defeat foreign foes. Within a few years, the entire world fell under the domain of the Golden Queen. For the first few years of your adulthood, you served in the Imperial Navy. Once the pride of the Empire, now you police the passive trade lanes of a conquered world. One day, your commanding officer hands you your new orders. At first, you think it is a joke. You've received your first command. The first starship in Her Majesty's Imperial All right, so space obviously service. Your orders <laughs> didn't have a ton of time. Defend her space from pirates. Destroy those who would do her empire harm. And found a new home. A colony for your people among the stars. All right, so I'm going to turn it down here for just a second. Um, kind of talk about the game here. So again, it was the Fargo Game Jam, and uh, what that was was uh, over the weekend here of the uh, October fifth or whatever that was, uh, the Fargo Game Makers group uh, had an event at Replay Games here in Fargo, and uh, they basically we shut the place down. It was kind of like a church lock-in, you know, if you, if you guys remember those. Uh, but we were there all weekend, right? Uh, we had to leave from, you know, midnight to 8, uh, you know, for sleeping purposes. But, yeah, we got there about 7 o'clock on Friday and uh, went till midnight. Uh, came back at 8 a.m. the next day, went to midnight again. Uh, came back at 8 a.m. on Sunday, and then we pre we had to have everything done by 4.30 and uploaded uh, for some presentations at 5. Um, I worked with uh, five gentlemen, uh, Andy, uh, Davin. Adam and Paul, uh, and they were four experienced programmers. Uh, so I basically, uh, <laughs> I was basically kind of like the creative director of the game. I did all of the art assets you're going to see in the game, minus um, the UI and a couple of these background stars here. Uh, Paul, uh, excuse me, not Paul, um, Andy did these uh, stars here because. Uh, Saturday morning, we were still working on getting our engine up and running, so we didn't have everything for <laughs> all of the programmers to do. So he worked on some of the background stars while I finished some of the uh, other animations. And I really like his background stars. You can kind of see they're, um, they have a pretty small scaling effect to create our uh, background or star field, but it's always randomly generated. And, uh, you know, they got a little twinkle to them. I don't know if you can see that. You can kind of see that on this bigger one here. Um, but yeah, I think he did just a fantastic job with those. Um, the rest of the art here, um, you know, like the button down here, the, the, these little stars here with the solar flares <laughs> popping out, uh, that was all me. Um, so basically the way our game works out of steam here, uh, you kind of heard over the interview, you, we're flying a spaceship, spaceship not pictured, uh, and it always kind of starts you here at the center star, right? This is the star you're currently at. These are all the ones that you can get to in your range um and you can kind of go down the map here each one of them is going to cost a certain amount of fuel to go to like to go to any three four five uh that's going to require you to take some fuel so go ahead and click there uh, i suppose i should get my music back up here so uh i think that's I think it's about here actually sorry guys so if it's really loud i apologize you can always adjust the volume you know how to turn stuff down you're an adult 
uh, or you're a child, in which case, uh, hey, welcome to the channel. Uh, make sure your parent or guardian uh, approves of you using the internet. Uh, I wasn't allowed to go online, okay, as the kids said, without having two uh, parental guardians and an approved uh, form from my youth pastor. So, um, you know, definitely make sure you have that information. But so we jumped into the star here. Here's the crux of the game. You explore the planets here. You're looking for something habitable. Uh, it's going to say colonize if it kind of matches um, some criteria here. Uh, basically, we're just going to go through here. Okay, let's visit Laganoli. You traded 8 metals for 16 ammo. Uh oh. Uh, Kegel, 128 visit. Success. You collected 1 metals, 3 water, and 1 fuel. So, uh, you, you basically go through um, here from the star map, you click into the center star to explore the solar system that that star is attached to and, and again that that all all this information kind of generates when the the game is initialized right uh you can go through uh visiting each planet but it re requires one fuel to do so um and again this is a game jam so it was a tight 48 hours not everything made it into the game there are some bugs there's some stuff we would have liked to put in that just isn't here uh, but I feel like we made a, you know, a product. We made a product. It's a game. It has a win screen. We've seen it. We haven't seen the lose screen yet, but it's there. Um, this is kind of our crew, um, you know, our ship information. We were going to have some information up here in the upper left. Uh, there's some equipped modules here for your ship. Um, these are supposed to stay constantly animated. They appear to only animate once. Uh, it says cargo bat, not cargo bay, but that's all right. Um, down here is our crew list, right? And so what's kind of interesting about the game is that we gen we sort of randomly generate uh, the species, right? Uh, and the species are going to have heat tolerances, whether it's uh, too hot or too cold for them. Uh, they're going to have sort of atmospheric preferences, and we created some sort of atmosphere profiles. And then also sort of a gravity tolerance as well, you know? And so that's all randomly generated. And unfortunately, it's kind of hidden from you. And it's kind of hidden on the planet as well, so we don't have as much information as we'd like to have for you guys. But uh, that yeah, that's all kind of going on under the hood. Um, and then when that species is randomly generated, it randomly generates some HP as well. So you can see each one of these uh, creatures, each Ganogi, is, uh, has five endurance. Uh, the name generator, it was very similar to this here. Um, but I actually had something for a different project I'm working on. So I had some sort of uh, medieval inspired fantasy names. So uh, Eric, Eric Adams. Hey, there you go. Ad <laughs> so you un unintentionally got your name in here too. Um, but anyway, and then so another kind of hidden mechanic is, uh, so the little tokens here are assigned to each of the species. Uh, we, I mean, ten, uh, ten little little peggle, little meeple looking guys. Uh, so potentially, I think we can generate up to ten species. Then assign each one a color, so you can see which one it is, uh, just at um, you know quickly visually. And we've also kind of <laughs> stolen some colors here from Star Trek. Uh, you know, red is sort of your your piloting skill here. Blue is your science, and yellow is your engineering. So. Uh, and then over here we're gonna have our cargo bay. That's gonna have your cargo bay is gonna have resources and it was gonna have modules and everything like that. But right now it's only got some fuel levels. Uh, so missing here, unfortunately, is like we don't have anywhere to show the ship damage. The ship can take damage over time. Um, again, this stuff just didn't make it. So uh, the idea is you can go to a couple different planets or a couple different stars. Excuse me. You found an abandoned coal bunker floating in space. You're able to salvage one unit of fuel from it neat let's go ahead and watch that animation one more time there's a little tra Ooh, look at all the planets here we got some chances all right we took some damage from debris collected two fuel that's nice this jajili jajili nena so yeah, so I, and again, I did all of the art here. Everything you see in the game other than this fancy UI uh, w was done by me. And I guess these lines that kind of get drawn are, are just, you know, part of the engine. That was very easy to do. So um, I did the music using an application I found online to sort of create ambient loops. Um, 
kind of I set him up as like an array uh, across. Uh, you know, I could send. There wasn't a ton I could do with it, but you know, I, I made some loops and listened to the ones I liked and. Uh, Let's see what else was going on here. So then uh, we had Davin, and I kind of looked at him. He was basically the, our like project lead, our team lead. Uh, he kind of felt like he was the most experienced of the crew in regards to sort of like making a product and delivering it uh, in that way. Um, he kind of worked on the engine, if you will. He, he outlined a lot of the um, classes uh, that we use, like, you know, the, the ship class, the modules classes, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, they, excuse me, I think he did the galaxy classes. He did, like, the galaxy generation class, the planet class, that kind of stuff. I think Andy did the ship class and some of the modules. Um, so I apologize. Uh, I, again, I was doing these art assets. I was busting my ass to get these art assets. I'd never, your boy is not an artist. I don't know if you're aware here, but look at this. Look at this gas giant here. Look at this thing. Look at it go. Um, and so, uh, I got some gas giants going on. Oh, I love them here. So we're going to see if we can win this game or die trying. Um, so... So again, uh, again, Davin's kind of like our, you know, project lead. He again did a, did what I described as the engine uh, of the game, uh, whereas uh, Adam he handled our UI. He kind of picked out the uh, library that we would use, uh, got all our screens implemented, got everything kind of like melded together, um, and got it. And he, he's the one who found this UI. Uh, the UI is an asset from the libgdx library. Uh, I believe we used Android Studio to program the game. Um, I believe it's in JavaScript. I, I so it was, uh, and again, it was cool because I, I came, I wanted to participate, I wanted to do whatever I could do. Um, but I was really excited because I've taken, uh, you know, a year of Python in college. I wanted to see what I could do. I wanted to get in there and do some real low-level programming. And just the way, just the nature of our team, which is like four uh, super experienced sort of dev guys, I just didn't get the opportunity to even like look at much of the code. So, um, but that I can do it another day. Um, I was busy making this sweet animation. You like that? So, um, yeah, so we are just looking for a planet to settle on. I'm not reading the events here. You collected three metals, three water, and one fuel from the planet. So, um, yeah, one kind of thing that sucks is that, like, we named all the events, but they don't show up, right? So this would have been, like, resource gathering. Uh, whereas this one, you know, Voyage was uneventful. That one explains itself. Uh, but there's some neat ones here. Your, your ship took too much damage from debris, so you ran into a debris field. Um, there's stuff that can have space pirates overwhelm your weapons and engines. They've taken zero metals, two water. Yeah, so we lost some stuff there. Let's check our ship out. Uh, 28, 25, 30. So a lot of this, other than the fuel, the ammo, none of it really does anything. The ammo we use to shoot, the fuel we use to move, but other than that, nothing really happens. Um, with it. So, move to this one here. So you can get an event when you move to a different star as well. So, um, visit five. Traded 18 metal for 36 ammo. That's not bad. Eric Adams returned from the planet famished and ate one extra food from the cargo bay. Eric! You little, you little meatball. Uh, hashtag uh, little meatball. Hashtag uh, that's a spicy meatball. Uh, to the people who watch John Oliver, am I right? Um, all right, so just keep clicking on it a little bit more here. See if I can find anything to uh, kill me or habitate. So. Uh, one of my friends, he was able to get a windscreen already, which was pretty cool. Um, I might make that uh, the thumbnail, I guess. Um, let's see, what else can I kind of talk about here? Just a little bit more here. Again, this isn't really a trailer. Uh, it's kind of a rambly thing. Oh, yeah, so in the video, uh, or in the details of this video, I am going to link... Uh, you know, I'm going to link where you can download this. Uh, you can, if you're interested, you can go to the Game Jolt. 
Uh, it's kind of a platform for indie development games, and you can kind of host game jams on there, which is really cool if this is something you want to organize uh, in your area. Um, but so if you search hashtag Fargo Game Jam 2019, uh, you'll be able to see the three final uh, products from our three teams. Uh, we had three teams of five people each compete again all weekend. Oh, it was an absolute blast um, just being around uh, so many people that were like, you know, so passionate about what they were doing, getting the opportunity to be involved uh, in something they may not be able to do every day. Uh, which is, you know, work on video games, work on something that, you know, for a lot of them is like a hobby uh, or passion or that kind of thing. Uh, but, the, you know, I don't think too many people were working as professional game developers out there. But there were a couple, um, not to not to detract from them. Eric Adams, I think he died. I think he died. Oh, we lost a crew member. So I think if we go down to zero crew, we lose, too. So we can just keep trying to do that. So... So again, trying to think of okay. So and then uh, I, I get in, I guess I didn't finish talking about the team. Uh, so I talked about Devin, Davin, excuse me. I talked about Adam, uh, and so uh, next up I guess would be Paul. Paul worked on our events engine. He did some um, engine stuff. He did some uh, definitions on that. But he primarily was he developed our events engine our events class and then made a good chunk of the events that you're seeing here the you know you collected this the pirates attacked you lost a crew member returned from it famished um so and then andy again andy helped me with some of that asset arts and then he also did um some of the engine programming working on i think again the module classes uh module classes being the stuff up here that's not super functional and again these are supposed to keep animating they only animate one time that's okay for something we got done in a weekend um i think this might be a good phone game to be honest you can make it like, like microtransactions like less fuel no almost no fuel given out during events while you're exploring but um you'd be able to um you'd be able to what am i trying to look for you'd be able to uh regain your fuel over time just floating in space or you'd you know, pay, pay us a dollar get all your fuel back just give us a dollar you can do whatever you want really just open up a patreon try to get a dollar for this bad boy oh yeah so again, yeah, the music's pretty fun. I'm enjoying it. Very good ambient. Again, let's get back to here. I actually really liked how this one turned out. And obviously, uh, if you watch my channel, uh, you know, I enjoy hip-hop. Everything kind of has a uh, hip-hop space aesthetic. And so this song actually came out exactly kind of how I wanted it to. So that was pretty cool. Oh, uh. oh, uh. about to rap, son. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move over this way. I don't know, I'll probably do another minute or so of this here, just keep blathering, keep all I click. So, uh, and again, I will link it uh, in the description below. I believe we're gonna have some sort of voting system on that as well. Um, so if you are interested, you know, I, I don't, I maybe put it on the Facebook page when the voting's open, uh, try and get some people to, oh, boom, boom, with the explosion animation, you guys. Oh, oh, that was so cool. Okay, so you lose, Woodburner. Uh, so I thought, you know, we were trying to come up with like a, that was Davin's idea to try to come up with sort of a, a steampunky insult. So I thought, what well, would be lamer than somebody who had to burn wood when you could burn all that sweet, sweet space coal. So, um, yeah, all right. So yeah, you can replay it again here. I'm gonna actually click exit. Oh, that was supposed to show the credits. So uh, anyways, I will cut it here. Uh, check out the uh, link 
in the uh, description below. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Again, this is a video game I worked on. I was super proud to work on it. Uh, and we will uh, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching and take care. Oh, I got 10 more seconds, so I'm going to just vamp. Uh, again, Game Jam, uh, Fargo, ga hashtag Fargo Game Jam 2019 on Game Vault. Out of Steam was my game. Check out the two other games, Ark and I believe uh, <laughs> Untitled Chaos or Chaos Project, <laughs> uh, also known as like Chrono Break 2025. 20, I haven't had a chance to play the other two yet, but uh, anyways, my name is Eric. Uh, this is Fargo Retro. Uh, thanks for checking this out. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.